So a little bit back, I made a video where I discussed reasons I believed Mahi Mahi Resort in Splatoon 3 was rushed due to questionable design decisions. At the end, I hinted at a follow-up video where I would discuss reworking the stage. So here we are! Instead of just going over the changes I would personally want to fix the map, I mostly wanted to theorize a few possible routes Nintendo themselves might go down if or when they eventually rework it. So in this video, I will show off three concept revisions of the stage. Starting off simple, but progressively getting closer to the original stage. Now before we begin, just a quick disclaimer, I am nowhere near a professional player, and though I understand the basic concepts of game and map design, I am neither an expert in either of those fields either. So have that in mind while we go over my three concepts. So with that said, let's begin. Here's a nearly one-to-one -one recreation of what we currently have right now. Looking at the stage objectively, I believe the absolute biggest problems are how small the spawning platform is, how tiny the middle area is, how isolated the islands are from the mainland with a single tiny block acting as the only way to move across, and how there's basically only one real way into mid. Yeah, this is pretty sad, so let's improve it. I present to you revision number one, the simplest but also most realistic rework. Just by a few tiny changes and tweaks, we already have a relatively big improvement. Not to say that this would make it a necessarily amazing stage, of course. Let's go over the changes. The spawn area is just a bit larger and extends out to the right more. There's now a gap here, so you actually have to jump to make it to the opponent's base. But most importantly, the previously cramped mainland has been extended so that the side islands aren't as isolated anymore, and the side flank route from Splatoon 1 Mahi is back, which I always saw as the main way to enter the opponent's base. This version of the stage would still be very simplistic and streamlined, but now we'd have what I'd personally consider to be its biggest flaws fixed to make it at least decent. If Nintendo went in a direction like this, I'd be disappointed, sure, but I could find myself going through a few mental gymnastics to become content with it. Like, it wouldn't be that bad. Also, this goes for all of these revisions, but the ranked layout should only make small tweaks to the map instead of being completely different layouts themselves. With that said, let's go over the important ones. The tower control route would revert back to its Splatoon 1 path without the trench under it. This route was miles better than what we have in Splatoon 3. The Rainmaker checkpoint should be in these general areas to actually take advantage of the full map and make the islands a viable route, with the goal right here. Though that would be pretty cramped, but still a billion times better than whatever the f this is. All in all, definitely an improvement. But now, let's go to the most realistic best case scenario, where Nintendo wants the stage to be actually good and faithful to the original, albeit still a bit simplified. Welcome to the near perfection that is revision number two. Now we're seeing a return of the intended diagonal shape of the original stage, with the islands acting as a shortcut to mid rather than being mostly irrelevant and out of the way. You probably also noticed the position of the map in the swimming pool was completely rotated 90 degrees. This is because Nintendo actually changed the shape of the map so much by vertically elongating the spawn that it had to be rotated in order to fit in the pool at all. This is again one of those very small details literally no normal person would care about, yet I find it pretty distracting since it effectively completely changes the positioning of the background. So since the stage is now more horizontal rather than vertical, I was able to fix it. Anyway though, let's look at the actually important changes. Starting off, the spawn area has been majorly expanded with this whole area now being exclusive to its respective team, along with having extra cover. It's also been squished a bit vertically. More islands were re-added, with the two that used to be here being morphed into one, along with a smaller one here allowing you to travel completely around mid like in the original stage. And the second floaty has made a return, with them both going back to the original Splatoon 1 positions, where they better behaved as protection from chargers. The tower route would be basically the same as Revision 1, so nothing special there. And the Rainmaker checkpoints would also be in the same places, only being enhanced by the bigger spawn area and more islands. But the goal pedestal itself now has all of this much larger area to rest in, making it less cramped. Honestly, if this is what Nintendo went with, I think I can speak for most people that this would be a pretty solid and satisfying direction to take a remake of Mahi Mahi in, seeing as it now retains every main landmark from the original stage, just in a slightly more streamlined and simplified manner. Which I think is honestly okay, and doesn't take from the feeling of the stage, really. Like, for real, if this was the version of the stage we got at launch, I'd have no reason to complain or make this video. But with that said, let's now look at my final concept. A bit less realistic, but in a perfect world where Nintendo didn't obsess over simplifying things. 
In my eyes, this would be the perfect modern translation of the stage. Now all of the islands are back, including this weird little isolated area that appeared when the water dropped. Always loved going there. And the spawn area is stretched even further horizontally to compensate for the wider islands. And of course, the tower and Rainmaker layouts would be the exact same. Honestly, it's not that different from Rev 2, but it's just complex enough that Nintendo wouldn't go for it. Give or take, this is pretty identical to the original map, obviously minus the revamped spawn area, which was basically the only real problem with the original stage. Just a solid improvement in my eyes, though as said earlier, I don't think anything like this would be possible as of now with Nintendo's current design philosophy, which really does suck. I think what we can realistically expect from a rework is something between Revision 1 and 2, hopefully leading toward 2 if Nintendo went back to square 1. But if their aim is just improving what we already have, I think something like Revision number 1 would be what to expect, sadly enough. Or, knowing Nintendo, they could do something completely different, changing the stage even further. Which, I mean, doesn't have to be a bad thing. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The first big content update will be coming very soon at the start of the next season, and while I'm not sure if it's realistic to expect drastic stage redesigns already, we'll likely see the return of Flounder Heights, which depending on how Nintendo treats such an open stage, could give us some insight on their approach to stages in the future. Yeah, future me here. Nintendo actually shadow dropped the trailer of the next update right when I was about to upload this video, so uh, this segment's kind of uh, pointless now. Whatever, uh, Flounder Heights looks alright. It looks good. We don't know much about it quite yet, but we do know they changed it quite a lot and did get rid of a lot of the flanking options to the left and right. It seems to take after Museum rather than Mahi Mahi and Hammerhead, thankfully, where it's definitely downgraded, but still the same stage at heart. Okay, so with that covered, I'm still gonna use the old script though, so take it away, younger, more ignorant me. If they keep it open, with its gigantic spawn area and countless flank options, maybe we can expect a much better approach to both new stages and stage redesigns in the future, while chalking up the launch maps to them just playing it safe or, you know, not finishing them. But if they completely destroy Flounder Heights, well that would just f***ing suck! I mean, it would be good because we should be grateful of what Nintendo gives us, no matter what. Complaining and criticism is just toxic, and a uh, um, uh, uh, moral of the story is uh, uh, just be grateful for what you have. And uh, people will find a reason to complain about anything.